Right, good morning everyone. My name's Matt Lazenby. Um, it, it's wonderful to follow on from, from John's words there. I don't want to turn this into some sort of um, school bashing escapade. Um, but I um, <clears throat> had quite a troubled education. Primary education was wonderful. I was one of only two people in my year um, in, in what was a pretty um, the sort of halcyon days of primary school education. Um, I, I, was, I was brought up in a, quite a rural location uh, in a little village called Ascombe Bryan. I used to walk a couple of miles across fields to my school in Ascombe Richard. Um, there was two people in my year, as I said. Um, we were often involved in, in co-teaching. We were co-learning with, um, with other schools. We were um, working in partnership with our teachers in terms of what we liked, what we wanted to do. Um, I showed an interest in jazz music from the age of about eight, nine. Um, so I was given um, uh, instrument lessons. Uh, we did, uh, we did, we did um, talks and visits. Um, the most wonderful primary education, really, I, I, I could have hoped for. I left there to go to a very large grammar school where I knew absolutely nobody. So I had an hour bus ride. Um, there was about 1,200 young people in that school. Uh, a terrifying, terrifying, traumatic experience for me. Um, and, uh, and taught me uh, masses, really, about um, what education was trying to, certainly in secondary, what they were trying to do. Um, it was the very early years of the careers service. So we were um, taken aside at, at one point to find out what we were going to do. Um, we, we fed all our kind of interests and qualifications into a, into a set of forms and, and we were given certain, uh, certain ideas, um, none of which made, made the slightest bit of sense to me. Um, I was incredibly creative as a young person, um, not very gifted in terms of maths, massively interested in English. Um, absolutely fascinated by um, the world around me, the natural world. And I would basically go to school to see my friends. Um, I, I sort of viewed it as a kind of social, social experience and um, was uh, working, sometimes staying up for nights on end, uh, working on books, working on paintings, working on pictures, working on designs. Um, this is one of my very early works. Um, which was um, inspired by my father. He, um, he worked for IBM for about 26, 27 years. Um, and uh, he was, he's an incredible man um, who certainly taught me a great deal about, um, about, about life in general. But this was an amazing outlet for me because um, I'm not sure exactly how old I was when I, when I created that masterpiece. But basically he was building a boat um, he was, uh, he was office bound, he was uh, working with personnel within, within a very large organisation um, and he certainly seemed to find a lot of, um, a lot of solace and, and uh, escape in the idea of design and creation of something like a boat. Um, I was incredibly inspired by the idea of, um, of designing small parts of this boat. It didn't end up looking much like that. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was more a standard kind of boat, that's something you might see in Spider-Man. Um, but I was, uh, I, was absolutely, uh, I was absolutely inspired by the idea that you could just take lots of bits into this enormous, um, well it wasn't enormous, it was a small porter cabin, um, and, and a boat would come out at the other end and, and this was going to be something created. Um, by him. So I kind of lost myself um, in my own pursuits and uh, worked really quite hard at some point um, outside of education. So my effort was not being exercised within school at all. Um, I, but I was, um, like John I think, having, enjoying a very privileged upbringing, um, having two parents who loved me uh, and allowed me to fail within school and, and actually succeed and pursue a very clear idea of what I wanted to do uh, outside of school. Um, so within school I was, um, I was kind of, uh, I, I, I was kind of, I was kind of lost within school. Um, I became uh, fascinated in design, I became fascinated with the actual potential of design, the, the idea of creation of something from nothing. Um, I was, um, I was very interested in uh, where design is, is, is going in terms of how it now is becoming a very powerful tool in the world um, of education, a very powerful tool in the world of, of, of business and how brands, the, the enormous power that brands wield now in our, in our world. Um, 
and now running my own successful design agency, we based on the shambles, that's the world's, not the world's, Europe's most visited street, I'm told. Beautiful old part of York, incredible privilege to work there. Um, and it's interesting working uh, as we do in that situation, we're, be, we're brought into businesses uh, and really given a tremendous uh, sense, a very privileged position that we hold within businesses. We're often, um, we're often trusted with very sensitive information. We're often um, tasked with positioning businesses in order to, to secure its future. We're sometimes brought in um, to help businesses who might be failing in some respect and improve and, and hone what they're doing. We're often, um, we're often asked to give businesses the, uh, the self-confidence and the belief in themselves to work out what is it we do? What's the, what's the one specific thing that we do better than most people? Um, and that always rings true as an analogy of education. There's so many people in business doing this type of thing, copying other people's work. Um, there's so many people, and not just in business, but in life in general. Um, a lot of people are much happier to copy what someone else is doing because they've done it relatively well. So they copy it a bit and change it a little bit to make it a bit like themselves, but they're never truly living themselves through their own business or through their own individuality. They're never really owning who they are as a person um, and asserting that. And if there's, there's probably two things that I've, I've learned very clearly from my life through education into business um, is that the, the knowledge of yourself and what makes up you as an individual and how you assert that in business, in life in general, um, is ultimately what you build your success on because your pride in yourself and your respect in yourself is fueled by um, delivering all of yourself in whatever situation you're in. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's a wonderful privilege to, 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 to know that and to feel that, but also to be paid to do it and help other, other businesses grow in their um, confidence of themselves and what they offer. Um, I think this is a wonderful quote by Brian Wilson. I don't know if you've ever, ever, ever heard it before, but it's some, certainly something we remind a lot of clients about. Um, there's an awful lot of um, a kind of sea of mediocrity out there. Um, and it's really only through assertion of your own individuality and your own weird ideas, because we are all really quite weird in particular. Um, and I think that's something we should, we should really celebrate and enjoy. Um, and I think as soon as you go down a particular path, it becomes habitual um, and um, you're never quite getting all of yourself out there. Um, pack of sausages. Uh, I think this is a lovely, um, a lovely analogy um, because this is, this is the kind of power of design um, for me in terms of um, how you take something. Normally people come to us with the hard bit right. They've normally got the hard bit right. They've got what might be uh, the seed of an idea, or they've got um, a functioning business, they've, they're, they're in profit, they're able, to, um, they're able to sustain where they are. And it's our job to um, hopefully impart ideas and, uh, and deliver new platforms, new types of positioning to, to offer you know, some real profound change in some cases, real transformation in some cases. Um, and this is certainly true of these sausages. We didn't actually do this project, but I just love it as, a, as an analogy because it's so clear. Um, these are Manaborn, great Yorkshire sa sausages. They were sold in and around the market towns, um, first North Yorkshire. Um, you'd often see them and you'd kind of think, yeah, there's some sausages. You wouldn't, you wouldn't remember them. You wouldn't forget them. You, wouldn't, you might try them, but y your expectations would be fairly low looking at those sausages. Um, these are Debbie and Andrew sausages. Who has ever bought Debbie and Andrew sausages or is aware of the brand? Excellent. Wonderful sausages. Um, these are the numbers that stacked up against the redesign of Debbie and Andrew sausages. So we went from Manaborn mediocre sausages to Debbie and Andrews. Debbie and Andrew were the actual individuals involved in the business. Um, so what Elmwood, who were the design company that performed this work, um, they simply brought the individuals out of the business into the public eye so that the public was suddenly aware that this work, these, these sausages were created on a farm by real people um, with a real understanding of animal welfare um, and with a, real, um, with a real understanding of how to um, develop beautiful sausages. Um, four million pound turnover in 2007 from just 30k in 2001 
Number one now in the branded sausage sector, 42.9% growth in 2007 to 8. Just staggering when you consider all that changes the packaging, just the packaging. Um, and, it's, and that analogy really does bear out in different sectors. Um, this is a great picture. Uh, this really just harks back to the, um, the things that I've learned. One of them being to really expose yourself as often as possible. Not at football matches necessarily, but mentally keeping a very clear understanding and take time to understand what makes you different from other people. Uh, take time to, make, to understand what sets you apart as an individual, how you perform as an individual within a business. You might be an employee, you might work as part of a brand, a larger brand. But unless you're employed because of who you are, you'll always be indispensable. You'll, you'll always be, um, it's the only way you can become indispensable, is by, is be, by becoming employed for who you are. Um, if, you can, if, you, if you can be replaced, then one day you may well be, may well be replaced. But if you, can, if you can assert yourself to the extent that people are actually buying you for you, um, you find yourself a very secure, potentially quite small niche, but a very secure one. Um, the other amazing analogy which, which I'd like to see um, being kind of embraced more, particularly within secondary education, but it's just one to kind of understand, is that I... Um, I work within an industry now, working for some very large brands and working for very small businesses as well. And one thing which is becoming abundantly clear is that large businesses are not, and potentially never will be anymore, um, as secure as they once were. Um, most large brands in, this, in, in, in the world that we live in and, and the brands that we buy are trying to appear smaller than they actually are. People are becoming less and less and less impressed by the supposed stature of, say, a bank. That the, the, the concept of a bank and the um, assurances that the banks used to offer used to give us tremendous um, feeling of, um, or, or, you know, that we were supported by them and, and there was a certain amount of respect associated with those industries. Um, that has been dismantled now to the extent that major supermarkets are not now, they may, be, they may well be very convenient, but people are starting to massively see the, the damaging effect that can have on a high street, on a town, um, on our own family's health. When we put convenience at the very top of, of those sorts of pursuits, um, all, so this old world is changing. Um, this is a massive picture of the Titanic heading towards an iceberg. Um, and my, the way I think about it mentally is the idea of a kind of, of a small business like ours. We're not, uh, we're not um, uh, unique in this by any means, but my industry now is made up of very small businesses. Um, in the late 80s, it was made of very large businesses, often owned by men who wore braces, drove Ferraris. Um, and now we, um, we're proud to be part of a very um, thriving, growing um, group of expert little companies who are actually um, working on specialisms. They are finding out what they do um, and they are getting better at that as opposed to simply trying to do everything. So certainly within, within the, the narrow field of my industry, the idea of a full service agency um, is thankfully being replaced by thousands of networked, thriving businesses, which might be um, happening in attics, they might be happening on boats, they might be happening in train carriages, they might have no base at all, they might simply be an internet connection. Um, and they are networked to people all around the world, they're doing business in most of the connected countries. Um, and when we're looking at career paths for young people, we just simply have to understand that, that we are not simply breeding an army of employees um, or a, a, an army of yes men and women. We're looking for people who are going to disrupt and for people who are going to change. And when we talk about those worlds, in, 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 particularly in secondary education, that is an incredibly hard thing to impart to a group of, when we, we, you've got a whole class full of them. Because if you've got a, a group of disruptors and changers, um, it's really hard to get them all to disrupt and change in harmony and all do it at the same time. Um, because by, by definition, they're not going to do that. But they are the very people who will, those skills will be demanded by uh, the, the, the businesses that they themselves will own. Um, you know, the, 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 the skills and jobs that they will pursue 
uh, in later life haven't been invented yet, for, for, for the most part. 50% of them haven't been invented yet. Um, they themselves will be the people who actually create those opportunities for themselves. The link-ups between education, healthcare, science, technology, um, the exploration of, of, of creativity, entertainment formats, um, gaming. Uh, it's, um, these, these worlds, as they collide, new things sprout off, um, new funding streams, uh, mobile entertainment, such as app development. Um, these are all lifelong career possibilities for, for, for young people. Um, and they need, they need those supports, those underlying skills, which might not be qualification driven directly, um, but there are underlying skills that, that are essential from primary to help engender creative thinking, to help, to help them understand that being wrong is actually, can be, a tremendous start for doing something better. Um, it's not failure. Uh, it's simply, you know, the amount of times we have to go back to the drawing board, sometimes again and again and again, and each time the idea gets knocked down, if we don't get up again and make it better and better, um, we're, just, we're just selling ourselves short, really. This is um, a staggering bit of design. It makes me so happy um, to see this quality of work happening in our world. But has anyone seen one of these before? It's a play pump. Um, that's a water tank. Um, so this used to be turned by donkeys. Um, someone had the ingenious, simple, brilliant, brilliant idea of simply turning it into a piece of play equipment. This draws water from the earth and stores it in that tank. It's filtered as it goes. Um, young people play on the parks day and night, day and night, basically performing the work that before was a, a, a sort of donkey's labour. They're doing it through fun, um, creating and drawing themselves fresh resources from the earth. Um, a staggeringly good bit of engineering, staggeringly good bit of design. Really, really wonderful. Um, that's me. Uh, that's my Twitter name, lazenbybrown.com, if you want to find out more about what we do uh, and the work, that we, um, the work that we do. But I'm looking forward to seeing the other speakers. Happy to be here with you today. Um, and that's me. Thanks a lot. <laughs>